In this video, we're going to be filling in the Y equals MX plus B foldable, uh, which you should have glued on the bottom of page six underneath the all about slope foldable. So um, let's talk about Y equals MX plus B. So Y equals MX plus B, this is known as slope intercept form. And the two most important things here to know are the letters M and the letter B. So uh, yesterday, we, when we talked about slope, we said that the letter M in the Y equals MX plus B formula stood for slope. Now remember, other words for slope include unit rate and rate of change. And again, remember, this is considered the steepness of a line. Uh, we can find M by doing rise over run or using the slope formula. Now, B is your Y-intercept. And remember, your Y-intercept is where your graph crosses your Y-axis. Now, your Y-intercept will be written as 0, comma B. So whatever number you have being added or subtracted to um x, this will be your y-intercept. So let's go ahead and look at our first a problem. So it says two linear functions are graphed below. What are the y-intercepts of these graphed lines? Now up top it says y-intercept is the point where a line crosses or intersects the y-axis. So first we're going to start off by identifying our y-axis, which is right here. And I'm going to mark where my graph crosses my y-axis. And I see that following my graph or going down my um, y-axis, I see that it crosses right here. And my y-intercept is at about negative 1.5. So my y-intercept is negative 1.5. Looking at the second example, again, I'm going to highlight the y-axis. And... Um, Following my graph, I see that it crosses the y-axis at a positive 2. So here you can either put negative 1.5 or you can write it as an ordered pair. So 0 comma negative 1.5. And um, as, a, as an ordered pair for the second graph, you can put 0 comma 2. So that was finding the y-intercept of a graphed line. So again, it's where it crosses the y-axis. So now let's go ahead and take a look at number two. So for number two, it says Emma graphed a linear function on the coordinate grid below. What are the y-intercept and slope of the graphed linear function? So um, to begin with, um, let's go ahead and identify our slope. And remember, we can identify our slope by doing rise over run. So here they have identified the two pretty points for us. And I'm going to start off at this point. So starting off at this point, I see I have to go one, two, three, four down. And remember with rise over run, if I go down, that means it's a negative four. And then I run to the right by one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I went right six, that is a positive six. Now I'm going to simplify this. In our calculator, negative four over six, sorry, control divide first, negative four on top, six on the bottom reduces to negative two thirds. So here my slope is negative two thirds. Now basing just alone off of what I found is my slope, I can cross out A, B, and C, and I'm left with D. And if you want to double check your y-intercept, it's at negative one-third. So here, my y-intercept seems roughly at about negative one-third as well. So again, D is our answer for number two. Let's go ahead and look at number three. So for number three, it says, which linear function is graphed below? So the very first thing anytime I'm trying to identify functions is I would identify my y-intercept. And I see that I have my y-intercept at zero, negative three. So uh, when I'm trying to come up with an equation, uh, remember this is in the form, uh, we're trying to put it in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And if my y-intercept is negative 3, then um, I should be subtracting 3 from my x value. Now up top where it says step 1, go to graphs, um, f1 of x means 
y equals. So uh, what we can do is type our equation without the y equals. Uh, we can press control T and this will pop up the table to check the points. Um, so first we're going to come up with two pretty points. So I have zero negative three and the second point I'm going to come up with is two negative two. So we are looking for the graph that has both the points zero negative three and two negative two. Um, based off of just this simple fact of me knowing my y-intercept, um, I can already tell that my answer is going to be B. But if you didn't know this, um, again, if you have determined two pretty points, you can plug this, plug these equations into your table and make sure that it has both of these points on there. So for instance, we're going to go ahead and start off with A just so you can see a couple of examples on what I'm trying to tell you. So um, we're going to go to our graphs. We're going to open up a graphing window. And um, again, where it says f1 of x equals, that is the same thing as y equals. So we're going to type everything, or we're going to type the equation without the y. So we're going to type in 2x plus 6. And this is what our graph will look like. And then to check the ordered pairs, we're going to press Control t and this will pop up in the table for you and you are looking to make sure it has the points 0 negative 3 and 2 negative 2 and here with this graph i see that it's at 0 6 and 2 10. so here we can cross out a now let's go ahead and check b so for b um we're going to clear it out clear out our calculator by pressing Control w and uh no we do not want to save anything so now I'm going to open up another graphing window. And uh, for B, our next equation is 1 half x minus 3. So we're going to press control divide, 1 on top, 2 on the bottom. Step out of your fraction, x minus 3. Pressing enter, this is what our graph should look like. And now we will press control T to confirm that it has both 0, negative 3, and 2, negative 2. So when I go here, when x is 0, y is negative 3, so that point checks off. And when x is 2, y is negative 2, so that point checks off as well. So again here, B has both of my ordered pairs. So your answer for number 3 is B. Now, if you were solving this by hand, since you have your two pretty points, if you wanted to do rise over run, you could. Um, so here I went up one, so my rise would be a positive one, and I ran two, so my run would be a positive two. So here my m would be one half. So then this would be one half x minus three. And again, this is exactly what we get here uh, with answer choice B. Okay, let's look at number four. So uh, for number four, we're going to follow these steps up above. And it says Gabriel is running a paddle boat today. Uh, the table shows the total amount he will pay to pay. He will have to pay based on the number of hours he has the boat. Which equation represents P, the amount of money Gabriel will pay to rent the paddle boat for H hours? So step one, they want us to go to list and spreadsheets and we're going to input the data from our table. So let's go ahead and start off by doing that. So again, uh, clear out your calculator, control W, you do not want to save anything. And we are going to go to a listen spreadsheets window. And here I have two variables. So this is going to be my X variable and this is going to be my Y variable. So opening up our calculator, the first thing we want to do is go up to cell A, type in X, and then go up to cell B and type in Y. So my x values are 2, 4, 6, and 8. And my y values are 90, 150, 210, and 270. Once I have both of my, or all of my data in, step two wants us to go to data and statistics. So remember, data and statistics is the icon with the bar graph. And we are going to label our x and y axis. So the bottom is our x axis and the left-hand side is gonna be our y-axis. No, so now we will see that our points are lined up. And um, our last step is gonna to be to click Menu, Analyze, which is four, Regression, which is six, and Show Linear, which is mx plus b. So here, this gives us the equation y equals 30x plus 30. 
So here this is y equals 30x plus 30, meaning that our answer here is C. Now if you want a shortcut for that command, it is menu 461. Menu 461. Again, menu 4 to analyze, 6 for regression, and 1 to show your linear graph or your linear equation. Okay, let's go ahead and look at number five. So number five says, what is the equation of a line in the form y equals mx plus b, which has a slope of four and passes through 0.25? So if it has a slope of four, remember m is my slope. And if I'm trying to uh, put it into slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, I already know my slope is four. So this should be four x. Based off of this alone, I can eliminate both a and c because it does not have a slope of four. Now I'm left with B and D, and um, I'm going to type both of these equations into my table or into my graphs, and I'm going to check my table to confirm that it has this point, 2, 5. So opening up my calculator, I'm going to open up a graphing window, and I'm going to type in the first uh, answer choice, which is 4x minus 3. Now I'm going to press Control T, and I want to confirm that it has the point 2, 5 which here I see when x is 2, y is 5. So here b is good, and I'm just going to double check c. I'm sorry, d. So pressing the on button, I'm going to open up another graphing window, and I have 4x plus 3. And now I'm going to press control T, and I see when x is 2, y is 11. So um, this one does not have the point 2, 5, and therefore b is my answer. Okay, hey, let's go to number six. So for number six, David has some money in his savings account at a local bank. He will add the same amount of money to the account each week for the next several weeks. The table shows the amount of money he will have at the end of X weeks, and we wanna know which statement is true. So again, these are my X values, and these are my Y values. Now, X is going to stand for the number of weeks. That is what your X variable stands for. And uh, Y stands for the number of dollars. Um, so now there's a couple different ways we can go about finding our equation. First, you can look at the table, find your slope by doing slope formula, then maybe possibly find your Y intercept. Or an easier step for you to do to find your equation for this table is to plug them into lists and spreadsheets and then finding your equation that way. So we're going to go ahead and do it that way. Uh, first step, again, always clear out your calculator. You do not want to save anything. Uh, you're going to do this by pressing Control W. And no, you do not want to save anything. So now you're going to open up a list in spreadsheets window and going up to cell A, typing in X, going up to cell B, typing in Y. So let's go ahead and type in all of our X values. We have 1, 3, 8, 10, and 13. Next, we're going to type in our Y values, which is the row on the bottom. So on the bottom, we have 125, 175, 300, 350, and 425. So now that we have our points in our calculator, we're going to go ahead and click the on button and go over to data and statistics. We're going to label our X and Y axis. And then to get our equation, remember it's menu, four, six, one. And here we have the equation y equals 25x plus 100. Oh, whoops, 25x plus 100. So what does this equation mean? Um, so the 100 is the am amount of money he had in his savings account. So I'm going to put this as the starting amount. And the 25 um, is the amount he's adding um, to his account each week. So I'm going to put weekly deposit here. So let's go ahead and see which statement is true based off of our equation. So it says David originally had $75. Well, that's wrong because he originally had $100. Um, B, 
David originally had 100, so that's good. And he will add 50 each week. That's wrong because um, his monthly or his weekly deposit is 25. So we can cross out B. For C, it says his original deposit was 75. Again, this is incorrect because his starting amount was 100. So it should be D, but let's just double check. So it says D says David originally had $100 in his savings account. That's good. And he will add 25 each week. Since his weekly deposit was 25, uh, both statements are correct. So D is my answer. Let's lastly go ahead and look at number seven. So for number seven, it says Brandon wrote the equation S equals 0.8W, which table shows only values that uh, represent the relationship between S and W in Brandon's equation. So we're going to go ahead and open up our calculator and clear it out, control W. And um, up at the top, it wants us to graph this and press control T to compare the equations table to the tables we have on um, our notes. So opening up a graph, um, I'm going to have to substitute W with X. Uh, so I'm going to put type 0.8X, press enter. And then I'm going to press control T to look at my table. Now here, if you notice your, um, your X is 4.4, 6.2, 8, 10.6. So here it's not going up by um, a whole number of one, but I do see that it goes up by possibly um, point twos. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate our calculator by, um, we're going to manipulate it to, instead of going up by ones, it's going to go up by point twos. So um, I'm going to click menu, two for table, five to edit table settings. And then you're going to go to table step and you're going to change this to 0 0.2 and then press OK. Now we see that our calculator goes by 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, so on and so forth. So the first point that they are asking us to check is 4.4. So I'm going to go to an X is 4.4 and uh, my Y should be 3.52. So um, I can cross out A and I can now cross out C. I am now left with B and D. So now let's check 6.2. So when X is 6.2, Y should be 4.96. Um, so here, when uh, X is 6.2, Y is 4.96. So here, D is my answer. B is incorrect because this is not 4.96. So that was your foldable on Y equals MX plus B.